What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of CNC. This is episode number 95. We started today's episode with a draw for the Champions League last 16 after topping our group with a win at the Stadio Olimpico. Our reward is an Italian side in the last 16 as well. As you can see, Napoli with the first leg in Naples, uh, the Stadio San Paolo, second leg of course back at Rodney Parade. So debut season in the Champions League. So far, it's going pretty well. Won five of our six games in the group. Topped it after our win in Rome on match day six. Only one defeat in those six games. Now, Napoli in the last 16, I I would definitely say we're probably favourites for that tie there. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Roma have got Valencia. So we finished runners-up. We'd be going to Mestalla. But Napoli in the last 16, I think we're probably favourites for that in our first year in the Champions League. Still, with the First thing we'll see in today's episode outside of the draw with Newport County is this. Isaac Davis, who's been with us since the very beginning, had a contract at the end of the season. He's 26 years old, which means he can be poached away on a free transfer. I thought this was pretty fascinating. Now, obviously, very recently we were talking about, you know, the transfer market and FIBA CM and player salaries and the unrealistic nature of those things. This was really surprising to me. Isaac Davis is now third choice striker in this team, barely gets a game. I mean, having said that, he did get a bit of game time last season, scored four goals in the Premier League, which was bizarre, including against Manchester United, Old Trafford, if I remember correctly. But he doesn't really play at all, hasn't played a minute worth of football this season, I think, as well. Maybe one game in the EFL Cup or something. But he doesn't really play. He's out of contract at the end of the season. The likelihood is in real life he'd probably be released by a club of our stature, knowing he's in his mid-twenties now and he's not going to get any better. And he's never going to get a game in this team from here on out. But instead, I offered him a very slight wage increase. I accepted every other um, negotiation the agent was demanding in his negotiations. And yet he said that the wage were an insult and then that was the end of the contract negotiations. That to me is part of the game which I really feel does need to be improved upon because, I mean, if you remember when we gave Gavin a new contract, right? His agent was asking for, I think, eight and a half grand a week as he scores his 15th Premier League goal in 18 games here as he takes the lead against Arsenal. Eight grand a week for a 20-year-old who also just so happens to be the best player in world football at this point in the save. Isaac Davis, we offered him 10 grand a week, which is more than what Gavin's agent wanted. And he said the wages were an insult and they decided to walk out. I think to me, it's just it's just a bit broken, do you know what I mean? Because there's no consistency to it. I could understand if the player salaries um, were calculated, the salary demands, I should say, were calculated based on factors such as age and overall and apparent potential as well. But when you've got a player like Humphreys, who again at 20 years old, 95 overall, best player in the world, <laughs> only wants eight and a half grand a week. Yeah, Isaac Davis, who can't get a game in his Newport County side, first choice striker, low 70s, 26 years old, is insulted by getting offered 10 grand a week, which is more than he's getting paid right now. Yeah, it's a little bit broken. It's something I hope EA look into um, in the near future. Anyway, yeah, first game of today's episode on the back of the win against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Arsenal at Rodney parading into this game. Took the lead through Gavin's 15th of the season, but the Gunners were hit back either side of half-time to go from a goal down to take the lead in this game. So we trailed by a goal, looking like we were on the verge of our second Premier League loss of the season until eight minutes after the restart. Rabi Matondo puts us back on level terms. Humphreys with the flick on, Matondo with the finish. Kind of like a, a similar goal to the first one really as Humphreys and Matondo once again assisting each other for goals in this game as per usual. And 64 minutes in still tied at 2-2. Really great game this one you know really really open. Both teams getting a handful of chances here. Golden chance to restore our lead. Humphreys trying to go through 1-1 one -one. caught up by Fernandez. I've got to be honest here I got a little bit greedy. Should have rolled through Rabi Matondo. He was making a run to the far post. Went for goal myself. Put it wide to the post. Bad decision from me there with my blinkers on. So still tied at 2-2. 15 minutes to go though. Definitely a winner in this game or so I felt so and I thought Arsenal had got it as well nice little ball through here and the finish pass Price found the back of net but after a bit of a 
odd celebration. It was eventually ruled out for offside. Correct decision in the end, straight about a couple of inches offside and a right call there by the Lino. So 2-2 to the final score. First slip up after a few great wins in succession. But not a bad result, to be fair. You know, battle back to claim a point in that game after we fell behind early in the second half. I'll, I'll take that. Arsenal are aside in Karimo, who are very, very hard to predict. Like, this season, they're in mid-table. They're, they're not having the best of campaigns. But there are other seasons where they're going for the title. There are other seasons where they knock on the door or sneak into the top four. And there are other seasons where, if you remember my Huddersfield Town Karimo back in FIFA 18... Do you remember in, I think it was the first or the second season, I can't remember which one now, but they were a game away from being relegated and they only survived on match day 38 by beating me. Otherwise, they would have gone down. They're just such a hard team to read in career mode for whether they do really, really well, about what you'd expect, underperform, or tragically underperform. They're such a hard team to read in FIFA CM, just like Everton, you know, they're just so hard to predict how they're going to get on season after season. And that game of 2 2 draw, though, I guess it's not a terrible result. Still following that, trip to Old Trafford, Manchester United away, desperately trying to cleat Manchester City at bay right now in second place, right behind us in the table. The Red Devils are in third. If they're going to get back in this title race and blow it wide open, they needed to win this game away at Old Trafford. Last year here, we won 4-0. And I remember that was the game where I thought to myself, I think we're going to win the title. You know when you're going for the championship, there's always that one game in the second half of the season where you think, yeah, I think we're going to do it. To be honest, I've got the confidence now. This was the game last year we won 4-0 away in the Northwest. This game, however, was nowhere near as routine. Really, really tough one. Price made a great save at one end. Dean Henderson on the other. We were still deadlocked at 0-0 right before the break. Still looking for that first goal of the game. Uh, <laughs> first goal of the game, sorry. Dan James leaves De Vrij in the dust. Runs through one-on-one -on -one and from the near post. Smacks it in towards the far corner and shows respect after scoring against one of his former clubs. Dan James having a great season so far, man. I, I love this guy. Seriously, eight goals in 19 games this year. Scoring the breakthrough right before the break as we do take ourselves the lead so one nil up at Old Trafford in a, a very very tightly contested game this one and nine minutes after three start looking for that second goal to hopefully kill the contest off Mark Bound going down the right hand side smacking one just over the bar as we still led by one and thankfully as we couldn't find a second goal and a cushion we got ourselves a rare clean sheet and a three points final score at Old Trafford one nil back to back times we've won here now and that does mean at the halfway point in the season as you can see as Leeds jump up to third place in the table not a real surprise considering how well they've been built in this save. The Red Devils dropped to fourth place, only had the Spurs in fifth on goal, but for us, we remain clear of Man City for now. 14 wins in 19 games, 50 goals scored, highest scorers in the league, but only one point clear of Pep Guardiola's side. we got 46, they've got 45. It's very tightly contested indeed, but the reason why we are staying clear well, pretty obvious. The top three scorers in the league. Rabi Matondo, then Timo Werner at Manchester City, and then also Gavin Humphreys as well, who's also leading the way in the race for the assist title right now, as Price is also currently top of the clean sheets charts. I'll tell you what, I can't remember the last time I won the Golden Glove in this year's FIFA CM with any goalkeeper I've got. It'll be amazing I'm going to pull it off this season here in our third in the Premier League. So, yeah, for now keeping Manchester City at bay as we into the second half of the season with that win on Boxing Day there. But it's still very tight indeed. I, I can't see Pep Guardiola side letting us go, man. And whilst, whilst Leeds and the Red Devils and, you know, Spurs, they can, they can still get back in this title race. I think really it's a two-horse race. We drew with Man City on match day three um, of this season. And I remember after that game thinking, man, that was that was tough. That was tight. They're definitely going to be up there or thereabouts this season. And it's exactly how it's panned out so far at the halfway point. So third and final game of today's episode. Final one of the calendar year of December. Ralph Aston at Southampton who have been pretty well built in this save thus far, but this season are struggling a little bit just above the relegation zone. Here at Rodney Parade, thinking this would be a banker heading into this game. Oh my goodness, fell behind through Briel and Bolo, and then a few minutes later, goodness gracious me. You know, I've mentioned this a few times before, and I will say it once again. Goalkeepers in this year's FIFA are so inconsistent, unpredictable, 
and error prone. But I kind of like it. Lee Price really should have kept that header out there at his near post instead. Palms it into his own goal. It actually goes down as an own goal through Price, which I think was a little bit harsh there. But even so, own goal from Price. Should have made a simple save. Instead, Butterfingers drops the ball over the line. But I've mentioned it before. Goalkeeping mistakes are a part of real football. So whilst this is controversial, some people disagree with this, and that's totally fine. I do believe they should be in the game. They are frustrating, don't get me wrong. It's so annoying when your goalkeeper drops a clanger and you think, how on earth did he let that in? But it's part of real football, man. Goalkeepers are not robots. They will make mistakes. So, yeah, I wasn't too frustrated about it because I know we've also had the benefit of goalkeeper mistakes from opponents as well. We lost the game 2-0, though, and I'll be honest, despite the goalkeeping error, I didn't play well in that game at all. I was all over the place, really. Now, unbeaten run in the Premier League after 14 games comes to an end. Man City closed the gap to goal difference. We're eight goals clear of them, and we're both nine clear of leads right now. But only goal difference separate the top two. 18 games to go. Second defeat of the season to go along with our loss to Aston Villa at the start of the campaign. Question is, can we keep Manchester City at bay for the rest of the second half of this season? With that, well, in today's episode of CNC, guys, big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time to the club and country as the January window will open very soon.